I had moved into a new apartment with my girlfriend about two years ago. It was pretty small. It only had a kitchen, one bedroom, one bathroom, and a living room. All of the rooms might have been small, but the rent was good, and we really didn't care. Neither of us made enough money to move out of the place, so we tried to make the most of it. One of the oddest things about the place was that the left wall was completely hollowed out, and the right wall was rock solid. I didn't even notice when we first moved in. Our neighbors were always quiet and kept mostly to themselves. And when we moved in, the only neighbors we had were the whites. The whites were to the right of us, and they were an elderly couple. They were nice to us. When we had first moved in, they brought us a welcome to the building present, which is what they do for all the new people who had moved into an apartment in the building. It was a small apple pie, which was actually quite good. About five or six months after my girlfriend and I moved in, there was a new guy that had moved to the apartment to the right of us. I remember first meeting him. I'd just gotten back to the building with some groceries, and as I climbed up the stairs to my apartment, I accidentally bumped into someone. Sorry, excuse me, mister, but I didn't know who the guy was. Our building is fairly small, and just about everyone knows everyone else. The man I had bumped into was middle-aged, probably in his mid-fifties. Something about him was odd, though. He had deep wrinkles, pale white skin, and long greasy black hair that was unkempt and around his face and back. He looked rather sickly, like he really needed to see a doctor. His eyes were a solid dark purple, which is something that I'd never seen before in my entire life. Peter's. The man said with a grin that stretched ear to ear. His teeth were disgusting. They were unbrushed and looked like they were rotting away. I could still smell his putrid breath, which seemed to reek of old decaying meat. Although his appearance was a little bit creepy, he seemed nice enough. Nice to meet you, Mr. Peters. My name's Matt. Are you new to the building? I asked. Mr. Peters' smile grew even bigger. I don't know how he, let alone any human, could smile that wide. Yes, I'm moving in. And I'm going to be living right next to your apartment, he said as we both walked up the stairs to the top floor. When we reached the top floor, Mr. Peter's pace increased as he quickly walked to the door, opened it with his key, and shut the door behind him. It was odd, though. He did it so quickly it was like a blur. I sighed to myself. Great, now I have a freakish neighbor, I thought to myself as I turned the handle of my door. It was about 4 p.m. My girlfriend, Sandra, was still at her job. She's a hairstylist and I'm a chef at a local Italian restaurant. I usually don't get off until later, but because business was slow that day and nobody was coming in, we closed early. I put the groceries down on the kitchen table and start to unload everything into the refrigerator. I didn't have much with me, only about one bag, a quart of milk, a few sticks of butter, ground hamburger meat, and a box of cereal. I then got a text message from my friend, Tyler. Bro, I just got my hands on the new Red Dead Redemption game, and you need to go out and get it so we could play together. That's what the message read. Now, I wasn't much of a gamer, but Tyler was one of my closest friends, and we've been best friends ever since middle school. I did have an Xbox 360, and Tyler and I would play games together from time to time. I really didn't have anything better or more interesting to do, so I texted him back, saying I would go out and buy it. As I was about to leave to go get the game, I heard a lot of banging coming from the wall. It was weird, though, because it was so clear. I went up to the left side of the wall and gave it a light tap with my knuckles. This was the first time that I realized that, for whatever reason, the wall was hollow like a log. I went to the right wall and repeated the process, only to be greeted with a thud. This wall was solid. I was puzzled on why in the world the builders of this place would make one wall solid and the other hollow. 
I was also curious as to what Mr. Peters was doing to make all of that noise. I just shrugged it off. Probably just moving things in or something. I told myself. But that couldn't be right. He didn't have anything with him when I saw him. I shrugged it off and left to go get the game. I got back around 5 o'clock with my new game and I was glad to discover the banging from Mr. Peters had stopped. I was happy with this. I really didn't care what he was doing as long as he did it quietly. I popped the game in and put my headset on. I've got a pretty good headset. Blocks out most of the sound. It was nice and tight around the ears. I loved it. Tyler and I played and talked for almost three hours straight. I would have gone longer, but Sandra came home about 8 o'clock. I told Tyler that I had to go and that we would play more tomorrow after I was done with work. Tyler didn't have a job. He didn't need one. His father was a rich man who owned some oil company or something like that. Don't really remember. But I do know that he spoils Tyler rotten. Gives him tons of money for doing absolutely nothing at all. I powered off the console and got up out of my chair to give Sandra a hug. We talked about stuff like how our days went, things like that. I then remembered Mr. Peters. Hey, did you know someone was moving into the apartment right next to us? I asked her. She told me that she was unaware of a new member joining our building. Weird that she didn't know of Mr. Peters. I decided that I would go ask Mr. and Mrs. White tomorrow morning. They know everybody in the building. They probably already have a pie baked and ready to send over to his apartment. Now, I didn't sleep very well that night. I had this insane dream about Mr. Peters just standing over my bed, my girlfriend laying beside me, smiling that terrifying smile. I was going to do something, wake up my girlfriend, run away in fear, anything. But I was stopped when he simply put his finger on my lips and quietly said, shh in a soft, friendly voice. It didn't feel like a dream, though. Everything was so clear, and I could remember it oh so well. It's impossible that it was real, though. That's what my therapist told me, at least. After a long, sleepless night, I took a quick shower and was going to get some food for breakfast. I also noticed the banging on the wall from Mr. Peter's apartment. It was softer this time. A bit more creepy. After my shower, I went to my kitchen. Only something was off. A quart of milk, a few sticks of butter, ground hamburger meat, but no box of cereal. I looked everywhere, thinking I just misplaced it by accident. Sandra woke up thanks to me, frantically looking for the box. Sandra, what'd you do with the cereal? I asked her while still looking in the various shelves in my kitchen. Didn't you put it in here? She asked while pointing to the spot where I swore that I put it. I could have sworn that I did, but I don't know where it went. Please tell me that you took it, I said, yet she continued to deny the accusation. I thought it was her regardless. I mean, who else could it have been? A burglar? No, a burglar steals boxes of cereal. I didn't pay much attention to it, though. I just said, guess I just grew a pair of legs and walked off and I forgot about the whole ordeal. I went over to the Whites and knocked on their door. I was greeted when Mr. White answered. Hello there, son. How are you this fine morning? He asked with his typical happy-go-lucky tone of voice. Hey there, Mr. White. Doing well, thanks for asking. But I came over to ask you about someone. Have you heard of Mr. Peters? I asked. Mr. White frowned when I asked. Well, no. I'm sorry, son. I can't say that I have. Who is he? He questioned. Well, he moved into the apartment right next to ours. I'm surprised that you don't know who he is. You, of all people in this building, would know if someone new was moving in. I said. Mr. White then smiled and said, Well, we should go and see how he's doing then. I think about it for a second, and then I took him up on his offer. And so the two of us walked over to his door and Mr. White knocked on it. We stood there for a little bit, only to be returned with silence. I found it odd that there was no response whatsoever. 
We didn't even hear any noises from the other side of the door. Hmm, well, he must be sleeping still, chimed in Mr. White. I found it to be a reasonable for the lack of sounds coming from the other side of the wall. Well, how about we come back later and see if he's awake? I asked Mr. White. He agrees to the offer and says that he'll have freshly baked pie ready for when I get back from work. We part ways and I go about my day as normal. Then I got back home. I changed my clothes and then went to the kitchen to grab something to eat really fast before I went over to see Mr. White. I grabbed a chocolate bar and went to the refrigerator, but when I opened the door, I saw no quart of milk. Now I was starting to get annoyed. Was Sandra just pulling a prank or something? I got home before her again, so I decided to just go see Mr. White and talk to Sandra when she got home. I knocked on the door and got something I wasn't expecting at all. Mrs. White answered the door, tears running down her cheeks and red, irritated eyes. Hello, Matt, she said through her crying. I was completely caught off guard by this, and so I simply asked what had happened. It's George, my poor sweet Georgie, she said. Now even though Sandra and I just called him Mr. White, we both knew his first name was George. What happened to him? I asked. He's gone. He just disappeared, she said through her now heavy sobbing. My mind rushed to one conclusion. Mr. Peters, why don't you follow me, Mrs. White? I rushed down the hall to Mr. Peters' door. I pounded my fist on it. I was once again returned with silence, complete and utter silence. Mrs. White came running down the hallway and caught up to me. Have you called the police about Mr. White? I asked. She nodded. They came over and I told them what happened. Now why are you banging the door? And who's Mr. Peters? I explained everything to her, and she too had never heard of him. Concerned, I pulled out my phone and dialed 911. Mrs. White and I waited for the police to arrive, but before they could get to us, Sandra came walking down the hallway. What's going on? She asked. I told her about everything that had happened. Mr. White and I coming over, the missing milk, and Mr. White's disappearance. Sandra waited with us for the police to arrive. They finally got to the apartment and I yet again explained my story. They both looked at each other and knocked on the door, also to be greeted with silence. They went to go talk to the building manager to see if they could get some more information, but he said that there was no Mr. Peters who lived in that apartment. Both the police and building manager returned to the door, master key in hand. The door then swung open. Nothing. It was just a normal, empty room. We all walked in, confused. Me more so than the others. And then I remembered. I walked over to the wall and gave it a light knock with my fist. The hollow walls made its standard sound. I called everybody over and showed that the wall was in fact hollow. What went from two police officers quickly escalated into ten. It took about three hours, but Sandra, Mrs. White, the building manager, and I all waited for the police to figure out what to do next. After some discussion, the decision was to knock down the hollowed wall, and what I saw next would change my life forever. It was a terrible sight. Mr. Peters lay quietly next to the dead corpse of Mr. White. His stomach messily flayed open. It looked as if Mr. Peters used his teeth to grind a large slit in his stomach, and then used his fingers to pry it open. But that wasn't the worst part of it. It was that in his opened up stomach was a pint of milk, cereal, and blood. There was so much blood, all over both of their bodies. Mrs. White didn't take it well. She was hysterical and started to vomit everywhere. Some of the policemen threw up as well, and even though I felt like I was going to, I resisted. Even though that sight was horrifying, that still isn't the worst part. 
The worst thing of the scene was his smile. He had that same ear-to-ear grin as he did when we first met. The police had their guns drawn, pointed right at him, but he just smiled straight at me, straight into my eyes. His gaze sent chills running up my spine. He got up and stepped away from the body, his eyes never leaving mine, his smile never losing its size. The police brought him out of the apartment and put handcuffs on him. Another of the officers took Mr. White out of the hollowed wall, Mrs. White crying all the way. I feel for her, really I do. If I had found Sandra in that state, I don't know how I would react. Mr. Peters was taken away, and he was given the death penalty. I saw a therapist not long after the ordeal, and I still see him once every week. I'm writing this now just to warn everybody out there. When you hear banging on your wall or roof, or just hearing house noises, you might want to give it a closer inspection. It probably is just normal house noises, but after this event, I never took the chance. I'm still incredibly paranoid, and I remember one night at around 3 in the morning, I heard some banging coming from my kitchen. I got up as I always do, but this time was different. I saw Mr. Peters smiling at me, his teeth dripping with the crimson fluid, which had to be blood. I turned on the light and he simply vanished into thin air. I don't know why this is happening to me. I don't even believe in the supernatural or anything, but I know what I saw. He was just standing there looking right at me, smiling that terrifying smile.